In this section of work, we're going to use approximate techniques so that we can evaluate shear force or bending moment diagrams on quite complicated structures that aren't statically indeterminate. So in the diagram, we have a frame structure that's got columns and beams and we've got UDLs across both all of the beams in the structure. But the structure is statically indeterminate. We don't have easy ways of calculating the bending moments or shear force diagrams in this structure. But if we apply some sensible engineering judgment, we can get good approximations for the shear force and bending moment diagrams. The first guess that you should always apply in one of these situations, if we just look at one of the beams, so maybe we'll zoom in just on this beam here, the first guess for what the bending moment would be on this beam was if we were to assume that this beam was simply supported with the UDL running all the way over it, in which case we know from statics that our bending moment diagram would be hyperbolic, zero at the ends because it's simply supported and we would have a maximum bending moment of WL squared upon eight. However, if we zoom in at the corners, we can see that there's going to be some moment restraint from the columns. And therefore, this assumption we made here of zero moment at the ends isn't correct. So what we can do, and we'll zoom in, is if we know what the end moment is, so in this case, I know for definite, but the end moment, if I assume that the beam is fully fixed, but the end moment would be WL squared upon 12. And I can use the principle of superposition. So this gap here would be WL squared upon 8. And taking WL squared upon 8 from WL squared upon 12, will give me a maximum mid-span bending moment of WL squared upon 24. So that is one third of the bending moment that you would get if you were simply supported. So that's now getting a closer approximation. However, if we go back to our original structure, the approximation of simply supported is quite an over-exaggeration. We could over-design our beam because WR squared upon 8 is 3 times WR squared upon 24. But conversely, if we assume it's fully fixed and it's not, we could be dangerously underestimating what the bending moment is at the mid-span. So when we make this assumption of fully fixed, we can calculate from our bending moment functions where the bending moment is zero. And this turns out to be at 0.21 times the span of the beam. And so then we could reduce our system here into a little portion of beam that supports the main span of the beam, like so. And then we could use the simply supported bending moment over this smaller portion of the beam from knowing where this inflection point is. But we'd like a better approximation that sits in between completely simply supported and completely fixed at the end. So a better approximation we could make that is somewhere nicely in between completely simply supported and completely fixed. So simply supported, the inflection point doesn't actually exist, but is kind of at the edges. And the inflection point for fully fixed is 0 0.21 upon of the span. So let's go halfway. Let's take our inflection point to be halfway between simply supported and fully fixed. And therefore we'll take 
our inflection point at 0.1 times L. And as we've got a symmetric configuration, we have 0.1 times L at both ends. And that leaves us with a simply supported span in the middle of 0.8 L. So making this assumption, we can draw a new configuration that is halfway in between. And from the notes, let's... So we have a simply supported beam with 0.8L, so we get 0.4WL as the reaction forces. And then at the column, the beam ends, or the connections with the columns, we still have 0.1L here, so we have a little bit of loading, and we have an equal and opposite reaction acting on this little bit of beam that's sticking out from the column. And therefore we can calculate that our end moment, or the moment at the column, is 0.45 WL squared. And we can also calculate then that the load is the total load W times L upon two must be coming from the beam and going all the way through the column for it to get back down to the ground. And that's a subject we're going to be looking at for load pass later on in the course. So if we take a look now at the bending moment for this section. So let's draw it quickly, the free body diagram for this. So I'll quickly draw the free body diagram we have. Reaction 0.4 WL. We have the load of W acting upon there. Equal reaction on this side because it's symmetric to so 0.4 WL. And the dimension which is 0.4. 8L. So we've got the reactions from some of the forces in the y direction and now let's try and calculate the maximum moment. So the maximum moment simply supported beam so we know that that's going to be WL squared upon 8. Apart from now we have M max equals W. Instead of L we have 0.8L squared upon 8 and so that's is equal to WL squared upon so that's equal to naught put this in the calculator naught point naught eight WL squared Previously, if we were fully fixed, so fully fixed, we could calculate that we had WL squared upon 24. And let's put that into numbers. You'd get 0.04, so 1 over 24, 0.42 WL squared. So we've doubled the bending moment that we're getting at the mid-span, and it's halfway between the fully fixed situation and the simply supported situation. So quickly examining what happens at the intersection of our beam and our column. We have a portion of beam but still got a bit of loading W on there. We have the loading coming from the 0.8L of beam, so that's 0.4WL. And we have a distance of 0.1L. So if I take moments about a point here at the connection between the beam and the column, I have Two components both going in this clockwise direction. 
So I'd expect my bending moment to go anti-clockwise. And I can take moments about this point and I get that that moment is I have 0.4 WL. So this force coming from the middle section and there's a lever arm of 0.1 L. And I need to add to that, we have 0.1 L times by the load on there of W. And then the lever arm is half of this distance. So that's 0.05 L, 0.05 L. So let's put some numbers into there now. So we get 0.04 W L squared plus 0.005 WL squared. So that's equal to 0.045 WL squared. So this is the moment we would expect at the intersection of the beam and the column. And to remind ourselves for fully fixed, I didn't derive where I got it from, but I said that the moment for fully fixed would be WL squared upon 12. So one over 12 equals 0.083 WL squared. So we've halved the moment at the end. So using a little, just to recap, we had a very complicated structure where we'd like to get the bending moment in the beams and at the intersection between the beams of the columns. We have fixed supports, we have multiple joints. This is statically indeterminate, but we'd like to try and use a way of using statics by assuming where the inflection point would be. We can reduce our system into three statically determinate structures, which we can use statics to calculate the maximum bending moment using these free body diagrams for the free systems. We can work out the bending moments that we're expecting to get. And we've made a better assumption between the fully fixed case and the simply supported case.